the settlement money from several companies that made, distributed, and sold opioid painkillers is starting to flow in. More than $50 billion will be paid out over the next 18 years to state and local governments across the country. But the debate around exactly how this money should be spent is just beginning. In the first of two reports, special correspondent Kat Wise and producer Mike Fritz traveled to North Carolina, where overdose deaths have spiked by more than 70% since 2019. It's part of our ongoing series, America Addicted. In Troy, North Carolina, Crystal Weatherly's new job starts early. As a peer support specialist, her first task is often gathering up boxes of the overdose reversal drug Narcan from the Montgomery County Health Department. Okay. She then heads to the local jail, where she works with inmates battling addiction. Hey, it's Crystal. By afternoon, she's driving across this rural section of the state with her friend and volunteer, okay, so Jamal here. Moore. Which one, this one or that one? Um, let's try this house, okay. I, think, I think this is. They talk to residents, hand out Narcan, and provide information about treatment options. My name is Crystal, okay, I'm a peer support specialist and I'm in the county working with folks that have addiction issues. Home to just 25,000 people, Montgomery County's overdose death rate is nearly double that of North Carolina's statewide rate. I'm in recovery, so I know what it's like to um, struggle in that, in that way, so I'm here to help people. Take After care. battling alcohol and drug addictions for 30 years, Weatherly says it's work that's deeply personal. She's been in recovery since 2015. People in this community that need help are more likely to talk to me because they know that I'm in recovery and I understand what it's like to struggle and have no hope. And so th that's what I want to do is offer people hope that they don't have to live that way. Few resources have been available to address the opioid crisis here in Montgomery County until now. Do you know anybody that might need some Narcan? Weatherly's job, which she began in May, and the Narcan she distributes are both funded by opioid settlement payments, now coming into North Carolina, a state that is expected to receive about $1.5 billion over the next 18 years. People need support and people need to know that the stigma that is typically attached to substance use is not viewed that way by everybody. The stakes for Weatherly and others on the front lines of North Carolina's opioid epidemic are high. The opioid crisis has been absolutely devastating. It, it is the deadliest drug epidemic in American history and tragically we're at the deadliest moment. North Carolina's Attorney General Josh Stein led negotiations for national settlements against companies that included Johnson & Johnson, CVS, Walgreens, and several others. In all, these settlements have netted roughly $54 billion. Is it enough money to actually make an impact? It is absolutely enough money to make an impact. It's not enough money to end addiction. But what I am 100% certain of is that there'll be many, many more people who are alive healthy and happy because of these funds and the important programs they're going to fund than otherwise would be. Stein says the goal of most of these settlements was to give states flexibility in determining how best to spend their money, but to also require them to use at least 85 percent of that funding on addiction treatment and prevention. Those requirements were put in place because of what happened during the 1990s after states won more than $240 billion from cigarette companies. We all watched what happened with the tobacco settlement. And here in North Carolina, that money just goes straight into the general fund and is used for whatever. It's not helping people who are struggling with nicotine addiction. What we want is for this money to go to help people who are struggling with opioid addiction. So the money is required to go to that purpose. But across the nation, how those spending requirements will be enforced remains a big question, says Aneri Patani of KFF Health News. She's been tracking how opioid settlement money is being spent. What's literally in the settlement documents is the idea that if states don't use at least 85% of their funds on the um, epidemic, then the companies, meaning you know Johnson & Johnson, Amerisource, Bergen, et cetera, the, the companies that settled, would be the ones to sort of hold the states accountable and say, hey, you didn't meet this 85% number, we're gonna take you to court and we're gonna reduce our future payments to you. 
So far, more than $3 billion has gone out to state and local governments. The amount of money each state will receive is based on several factors, including the percentage they contribute to the country's total number of overdose deaths, the number of people with opioid use disorder, and the total population of the state. $50 billion is a lot of money, but you think about it being spread over 18 years and across 12 different companies, a lot of these pharmaceutical companies are bringing in profits in the you know, tens of billions. Uh, you take Johnson & Johnson, for example, they're going to be paying out $5 billion in the opioid settlement funds in total, but they last year made profits around $95 billion. So a lot of people are looking at that and thinking, you know, this is not that much coming from the companies. But it's money that many hope will make a difference. In North Carolina, 85 percent of settlement funds will go directly to counties and the rest to the state's legislature. To have this additional funding really is our, our first step towards getting, getting our community back. 43-year-old John Shaw never imagined he'd get into politics. But last year, he became a Montgomery County commissioner, in large part because of what opioids have done to his community. In, in the last five years, you know, personally, I've known five people to pass away. You know, in, the, in this past one in January, uh, my, my best friend in life. <laughs> and and he, he struggled for, for quite some time. Shaw's best friend, Chris Goodwin, loved music and his community. He died from a fentanyl overdose in his home earlier this year. While Shaw hopes there will one day be enough funding to open a residential treatment facility, he's now focused on saving lives. We haven't engaged this issue, not just here, but uh, across this country, and it's seeped into to every household in one way or another. And um, we've got to get proactive to provide recovery and retreatment options for, for those who want it. That's why he pushed to spend Montgomery County's first settlement payments, about $70,000 so far, on more Narcan and hiring Crystal Weatherly. Within 72 hours of an overdose, we want to have her engaging with that individual. You know, after that, after that experience, um, it's a great time to talk to somebody about possibly making different life choices. But for those who lost loved ones to opioids, this settlement money remains largely out of reach. Without them, we're lost. And now, without anything, we're lost. Rita Russell has lost two children, her daughter Alicia and her son Whitley, to overdoses in the last four years. She and her son John sat down with me in Fayetteville. There's a lot of parents that lost their children. There's children that lost their mother and fathers. I hope as a survivor, along with all the other survivors, that we get some conversation. Yeah, there was people dying back there. John, who is a community uh, activist, uh, says he was angry when he learned none of the state's now, money would be done. going to families so like his. Right He's and been traveling to settlement funding meetings across so North Carolina. A lot of times I, I sit there in them rooms and I'm like, I wonder how many people here have a, love, have a lost one. How many individuals in this room with me have lost one? But it's a different complexity when you got somebody that, you know, you really love die from it. You see things a lot differently. Russell says his sister, who died in 2019, was outside a gas station when she overdosed. Those around her weren't able to help. If she would have had Narcan, it might have helped her. So then I said, well, why don't we just normalize this and put it inside stores? He's now hoping to apply for some of the state settlement funding for a new nonprofit that aims to help people right? find Narcan via an app he is developing. Yeah, this goes for the store, so that way if anybody comes in and they have an overdose in the store, you got something to work with them with. If we're dealing with an epidemic and you're calling for individuals to step up to the plate, there's a lot of individuals that will step up to the plate that are doing things. So it's this one right down here. For Crystal Weatherly, she knows her work is just beginning, but even the most difficult cases represent an opportunity. I think it's critical to reach them and that it doesn't matter to me how many times they've overdosed. There's always hope. And as long as they're still here, I see someone with potential. I see somebody that can have a different life. A glimmer of hope, finally, for a state that is now losing more than 4,000 people to overdoses a year. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Kat Wise in Montgomery County, North Carolina. And tomorrow night, we'll travel to Ohio, where the debate around opioid settlement money has led to a legal battle.